say, well, uh, Mr. Robert Clark joins us this morning, the senior advocate of Nigeria. Morning, and thank you for coming on. Happy Independence Day, by the way. Well, I wouldn't say it's not happy, but I don't regard today as a happy Independence Day. Why not? Actually, I was on a flight yesterday from Abuja, and one of the air stewardesses greeted me this and we said, happy anniversary. And I told her, there is nothing to be happy about on this independence, because Nigeria is not in a happy mood. So why should I be happy? But when there's life, there's hope. When there is life, there's hope. That is when you see the green light in the tunnel. But looking at Nigeria, I can't see any green light in the tunnel. Well, yet. the president said he's rededicating himself. It, it means that they're about to, shouldn't we expect that, okay, we should expect them to start doing the right things if they haven't been doing it. For the past 53 years, we've been hearing such statements from all our leaders. None has manifested into reality. So if he wants us to believe that he's rededicating, well, let us see how the action comes after. How do you consider the speech? Because he also did say he's not going to try to score political points. He's mindful of the reality on ground. People are not exactly uh, happy to use the word divided. And so, isn't that a start? Well, he mentioned only the Boko Haram. But when you look around Nigeria today, it's kidnapping today, not more horrifying than Boko Haram. Let's ask ourselves questions. You see, the security situation in Nigeria today transverses the whole country. Boko Haram is just about 5 or 10% of the problem of Nigeria. Kidnapping today is taking a tremendous step. Within the next two years, if we are not careful, Mr. President himself will be afraid to go in an entourage on the road. Is, so, is, is, is it that bad? It's so bad. I am not saying because my good friend Ezekome has just been released. I'm not saying because a judge has now been kidnapped. But do you know how many people are being kidnapped every day? Every day, every five minutes, a Nigerian is being kidnapped somewhere. Every five minutes? Every five minutes. It's just like somebody telling you that in London, every one minute, a car is stolen in London. It's a reality. In Nigeria, throughout every five minutes, a Nigerian has been kidnapped. What about the reaction? Because we also do hear that after this kidnapping, in some cases, some say in most cases, the police eventually catches up with some of these chaps. The police, with due respect to them, with due respect to them, our police in Nigeria are so well trained. They are trained in the best schools of police training in the world. They know where these kingpins are. It is when a big man is kidnapped, then you find them going to the king, uh, kingpin's nest. It's a common talk here that between certain areas in Edo State, in the plantation zone, there is a village where these kidnappers keep all, you know, virtually over 1,000 people at any given time. The police know about it. They know about it. Then what is keeping them from, you know, going there and destroy the whole place? Look, let's be honest. Security-wise, our police know everything. It is when you touch a big man or you touch a policeman, then you'll find results. You know, you've said that there is really nothing for you to be happy about in terms of you know how far we've come in our 53 years but listening to the president's speech yesterday which is one that should give you hope uh, would you say that nothing at all points in a direction that we actually can hope for a better future I am saying it with all confidence and with the little command I have in 1999 President Sobasanjo made a similar statement within six months True Bola again, there will be no more darkness in Nigeria. Within six months, within two years, this will happen. Obasanjo took over as president. The megawatts that were being you know, consumed was about 2.9 or 3. He left office with the same range after eight years. Our good president has taken over for at least 
over three years now. We are still, you know, oscillating on 2.9 megawatts. I listened just before sitting down here. We, we, we've gone up from that. No, let me, I listened before leaving here when they were presenting certificates to the new venturers. Investors. Uh, I would, uh, no, I would say investors. With the new venturers who are coming in to invest in Nigeria. I didn't see any foreign face except some Chinese face sitting behind. All the people being presented to us are Nigerian traders who are still going to go to the original people who are coming to do the job. Why not give it to the original people? Why bring middlemen when one third of the money will go to the middlemen first? And how, ma how many megawatts are they expecting in five years' time? They say in five years' time they will be producing 5,000 5, megawatts. In South Africa today, a district in South Africa produces more than five megawatts. Just a district. We've been told that in South Africa is way around 40,000. I mean, no, I'm just saying one thousand. district alone. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, they did not get there in one day. Uh, if, if, as it stands right now, we as a country are for over 150 million people have been making do with the, just about that amount, you know, on a yearly basis. What, what don't you think that to, to be able to double that figure in the next five years will make significant impact on us as a people? Madam, we are talking about 53 years of existence. When I was in the secondary school in the 50s, we go out as young boys to listen to campaign. The politicians say, look, I will give you fire and water. When they mean by fire is electricity. I will give you water. I was about 16, 17 years old. Today, I'm 76. It is the same campaign. When I go, I hear, we shall give you light and water. For 60 years, I've been hearing that. When is it going to stop? Today again, Mr. President is saying, I will give you light and water. But isn't the fact that they were at least... Where is the progress? If we're able to deliver on telecoms, I mean, it, it doesn't that point in the fact that, you know, in the direction that we could actually deliver on power at some point? Who said we have delivered on telecoms? We haven't. We haven't. We upgraded a section of telecoms and killed another section of telecoms. Go to civilized countries today, on your table, you take the telephone, you dial. In which office in Nigeria today can you carry a telephone and dial? Where you have completely killed Nigel. There is nothing technologically superior in mobile phone. It's the easiest technology. So what have we achieved? But with respect to power, I mean, I hear people say that, well, they experience uninterrupted power supply, at least some say for 24 hours, others say 42, 48, some even say 72. So, but the fact that some others haven't had it that good, does it mean that there is no improvement whatsoever? I spend most of my time in Abuja now just doing cases. I can assure you, for the past two years that I've been oscillating between Lagos and Abuja, I've never seen the electricity for not more than eight hours. Even in Abuja, in Lagos, personally in my house, I supply myself with electricity. I have an inverter with 16 batteries that helps me when NEPA goes, automatically it takes over. If NEPA does not come within those eight hours, I turn to my generator. And I can assure you, 80% of Nigerians source their own electricity. Do you believe this, that 80% of the energy Nigeria is using today to source power are derived from generators? 80% of the energy we are using in Lagos today is, you know... According to what statistic is how, that? How, 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 how difficult That's can it really be to fix Surma? How, how difficult can it be to fix Nigeria? Because if you say, because I, I was wondering, sitting and listening to you telling me that the same story I have always heard is almost deja vu even to you till now. So how difficult is it for us to fix all of this problem so that we can stop talking about giving people electricity and water and move on to some other necessities? There are two ways to go about it. 
let government take its hand off these things first. And when they are going to give out the contract, don't give it to Nigerian middlemen. In telecommunications, Siemens is there, they are all noted. There are many, many international companies who will come here and take this thing directly. But tell me, even these telecommunications you are talking about, mobile, you had to bring in Nigerian force. Then they will bring in the this thing. And you know what that means when you bring a Nigerian. One third of the money allocated for that project goes into their pockets. I am bold to say it because they must survive. They are businessmen. I don't blame them. So you have no confidence in this process? I don't have. Seeing that picture, the people who are being given certificates this morning that I saw, they are businessmen. Why are they in business? They are in business to make money. But to make more money, they have to provide the goods. They have to provide. But before they provide it, they will take their own profit share first. Mm -hmm. So that reduces the amount of money that goes into the project. Then the contractor they are now subcontracting to also takes his one-third percent because he's, he must get his profit. So by the time the goods arrive here, maybe 50% of the money has gone for payment of profits.